You guys know we're back with another cast over. This time we're once again returning to Vanishing Valley, a new-ish map. I say new-ish because uh, Ben Tabersky made it, but it was made out of another map, I believe. Like, it was basically based on one of these Blizzard maps from way back, so that's kind of interesting. Anyhow, we do have three noises, which is Kian, and we have the Shambler, which is the Shambler, and we will indeed see uh, another Protoss versus Protoss on this very map. Will it end in the same way that the last cast over did, where Mesk was able to... He was he was graced with the presence of something very silly. Well, we'll, uh, we'll find out. Now, Mesk did point out there's some broken tiles here. There's like one here. There's a bunch over here and stuff. And he also speculated that maybe it was the mappers messing something up. It is. Uh, however, I sort of have some understanding as to why that happens. It's just a little bit difficult to actually accurately figure out where precisely the structure, like all of this stuff goes, right? All of the different uh, tiles go. And it does take a little bit of a learning curve and whatnot. But there's a, there's a couple of other things that you can take a look at here that I think are just sort of like pet peeves. Uh, first of all, here's a pet peeve of mine. Blizzard decided to go with this as an actual released product. In their released product, they just have a giant pixel gap that's like immediately obvious as soon as you look at it. So that's great. I'm glad that's happening. But over here, we see like this subtile for the ramp is sampled from this, right? It's like literally this tile, but with the thing over it. So... Unless it's your intention for it to be oddly symmetrical, you know, obviously you would ideally remove that because it's like the randomness uh, gave you the wrong tile for this area, right? You can't control this, right? Because we don't have other tile variations of that because that's part of the ramp. But you can control this one, so you just like paint that one again. Uh, over here we have the same tile, but it's mirrored. That obviously looks really ugly, especially with something that's organic. Same thing as over here. And, uh, you know, over here as well, you got like the same thing over and over again, right? And so like I wasn't really intending to nitpick... Um, massively each time, but uh, it just ha so happened that that one area had it. Like, you know, you see the repetition here, the repetition here, it's it's just everywhere. And so if you look at it, if, you know, repetition here as well, it's, and here, it's like, you know, like, wow, there's actually a lot more than I thought it would. But, you know, that's what happens sometimes. The the RNG, the random tile generator just gives you the wrong thing. We've, um, in Antikythera, we are obviously gonna have something that uh, deals with that a little bit differently, which I think is ideal. Uh, because what you're going to see when you uh, take a look at something in Antikythera is you're going to see that the tile generator actually recognizes what tiles it has randomly given you thus far and will not give you the same shit right afterwards. So you just won't have the like repetition like that. At there will at least be like a one tile gap between it. And maybe that'll even be something that people can adjust. Like maybe they can disable it if they want. Uh, that to be a possibility or something, right? Because maybe for something that's a more or, um, inorganic, artificial avenue, that might work. <coughs> Speaking of working, let's see if this attack will work from Kian. I suspect not, but he might be able to harass down the uh, pylon. He's certainly trying to get fo the focus onto his uh, Dracodin while the Simulacra split. There's a Hierophant out here. It has received 80 shields instead of 100. And that Sim is not long for this world, especially now that it's been tickled. And, uh, yeah, it looks, looks like there's going to be a turn onto it. Actually, I'm not sure if he's been able to... Okay, he has been able to kill most of them. There's only a, a pair left, and they will indeed die. And so the... Uh, Kian's sent home with his tail tucked between his legs as reinforcements are inbound. A very similar opener, actually. Uh, Shambler usually going for the lattice first. He's just opted for the gateway this time around, and he's backing it up with a cenotaph. This is a, a fairly classic build from him. He also likes this build. And we once again see a second gateway being added, and, of course, uh, the lattice here, a uh, redundancy pylon. You like to see those, but in the case of Protoss versus Protoss, you re any sort of mirror matchup, right, you, you have this sense that if you spend more money than the other guy, you're going to be behind. And it's a sense that doesn't really impart in the same way for, you know, the uh, some sort of race ambiguous option. Because if I'm up against Zerg as Protoss, well, the Zerg is going to be spending money very differently than I am, right? So there's all these things that you kind of think about. And it definitely makes it uh, an interesting sort of thought process of how you approach spending your money. That being said, Shambler doesn't seem too concerned. He's building a Warden. He's building a Matrix. That Warden could, of course, be shot down here. Um, it looks like he wants to focus on the Hierophant, and he might actually be able to. Indeed, he will. That's a, an expensive loss there. But a second one is being built. In fact, wouldn't that have been the third Hierophant? Maybe I missed the, the one dying there. He's going to harass some workers instead of going for the Warden, which, you know... Whatever, you're shutting down the ridge mining time. It's valuable in, in and of itself, but you definitely could be going for that. Uh, unfortunately, it's too late now, and so I think his uh, aggression will have to be 
attenuated based on that. He's actually going to commit to it anyway, even though it just finished. And so he is going to lose both Dracodins as a result. And, uh, well, I say both. He does have a third one here, but it's not going to be accounting for too much. So, yeah, I think that's just a natural, like, if you see the Warden just warping in and it's, like, halfway, and then you calculate, okay, based on that amount of time, I can, like, position myself into a good spot to kill the Hierophant and then maybe move more freely in the base because I'm not being harassed by his passive. That kind of makes sense. Maybe you kill the Hierophant and then immediately pivot down to the Warden in that particular case. All the while, Kian has a decent amount of minerals banked up. He is uh, waiting for, I assume, 75 gas to drop something else. Uh, oh, it looks like he's canceled that idea. He's just going to be harvesting from the ridge, realizing that if, it, if gas was his limiting factor, he was... Um, well, he wasn't harvesting it, so that explains why he didn't have it. And yeah, another thing that's always a uh, question is, when do you choose to expand uh, in a mirror matchup in particular? Again, it goes back to that idea that, you know, if, I, if I'm expanding and my opponent isn't, then my opponent will have a military advantage over me. And maybe even a short-term economic advantage if they build more workers for their main and stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe they have defenses or something. And either way, it's going to feel like I definitely can't do too much. Now, on the last cast over, you guys have noticed that this base has three mineral fields. It's an interesting decision. Also, the cock over here is misplaced. You can tell because there's a bunch of fleck tiles underneath. So uh, that is something that uh, is pretty easy to resolve. But you know what? If he wanted to put the cock exactly there, then that kind of explains it. I personally wouldn't put the cock anywhere because it's a cock. And uh, I just don't need that symbology in my maps personally. But, uh, you know, sometimes it happens unintentionally. We talked about the unintentional uh, smiley face on Excelsior. And uh, now we can talk about intentional cocks on Vanishing Valley. As well as a Nexus going down here, an expansion in a more mineral rich area. Although it's only, what, six mineral fields? So not terrible, but uh, not stellar either. So he will be taking that on the Shambler side, which will give him an economic advantage. I think he feels confident enough that he won't be uh, burst down any anytime soon, but Kian has an opportunity to end the game here, especially if he ends up moving a little bit forward with this army. Yep, he's only lost a Dracodon so far. He will be able to equate that, uh, equalize that trade, and I think you know he should be able to chase that with a manifold. And uh, oh, the height, the the vision loss was uh, a little bit rough for him. He still hasn't been able to kill that, even though he desperately wants to. <laughs> you can see him him sort of getting a little bit blinded by that chase, and now he's not even focusing it down. Zealots are in here, are going to force the kiting, and this is just an awkward terrain for a fight, although he could obviously have committed to that and, you know, won just fine. Uh, but it does mean, by the way, that, like, if Kian were aware that this base was going down, he could very easily pressure it, but the Shambler is going to uh, sort of cross his fingers that actually his opponent doesn't have anything like that. We see the Rogue Gallery now, and Cabalists are on the way out. I was actually uh, caught a little bit of an exchange between the Shambler and Kian talking about how Cabalists felt underwhelming, but uh, I think... Their passive right now is just maybe a little bit unintuitive for people. When they de when they are decloaked, their attacks uh, deal half damage, but they do as a result uh, recloak them. And so it's more of a like a you maybe you would rather do the damage and not recloak, but that's sort of the identity of the unit. Um, and you know, there's a question as to whether or not would it be more convenient or or more interesting or something if if the unit didn't recloak. But the the recloak part is kind of like the whole deal behind the passive, right? Behind the unit. So uh, one legionnaire watching out for anything. He's actually going to get a good scouting runoff on this, and there's no static defense, so he could he could even tickle the, some things. But uh, I think he'll be okay. You could just kill that with a. He might lose a single scribe because he's not microing, but he can definitely just kill the legionnaire. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bit, bit silly, but uh, you know what? It's a, it's a little bit of a tickle. You know, again, just taking your opponent's attention away from stuff is uh, sometimes enough. And of course, the minor economic advantage that the Shambler has might be manifest in this particular area. The Kabbalist and a lot of the melee stuff can't actually in interact here. There was the one Zealot, and actually the rest of them are now in. And so that's pretty legit. Obviously, the Kabbalist getting uh, slapped a little bit here as soon as they're uncloaked. But there's not enough ranged units left anymore for Kian to make a big difference here, I think. Pretty good, uh, you know, movement there, and pretty good targeting for the Kabbalists. It was convenient targeting anyway, and I'm not sure why the Shambler backed off. Uh, there's actually no more units uh, being sent over, and a lot of them are going to be melee when they are sent over. And so at this point, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, very much a... Yeah, he can evacuate with the Kabbalists just fine, but it's going to be a uh, strider of victory. And uh, now it's up to Kian whether or not he can uh, withstand the assault that is impending him. Aquifer going down, that will be 40 seconds or so from this point forward until he can harvest gas again. 
So he will be opting for mineral heavy stuff. We got the vagrants. We got, you know, dracodins. A little bit of gas still left in the can. He can morph uh, or train one more. And yeah, just confirming no expansions here is the shambler. Making sure that there's nothing uh, untoward happening. And actually, he's um, opted for a ramp, but it's not terrible. Uh, even so, the melee units can definitely sort of get up that ramp relatively easily. And yeah, there's some spinning happening because of some mis mis micro. We love ramps in Brood War. That's just what they do. Kiting backwards over and over again. This is actually not a terrible situation to be in if, if you're positioning your Draconins like this because you're up against mostly melee units. But at this point, I think it's, um, you know, the, the fate is sealed for these Striders. And that's just A-OK -okay for the Shambler. I mean, he would like to have more units at home, but I think he hasn't really spent his money too well. And he's not even able to seal the deal on that Sim. So it endures. At this point, I think most of the Lattice stuff has been manifolds, which makes sense because that, that's going to be the more damaging oriented thing. And yeah, it looks like Kian is going to opt for an expansion, but he's going to go to the uh, mid-right, which is going to afford him a geyser. By the way, we are uh, aware that uh, the map, like in witness mode or replay mode rather specifically, it doesn't seem like you actually get the full uh, reveal of the terrain. Like when I'm, uh, well, I guess this part is, but like revealing resources and stuff on the minimap and the, the minimap stuff in general doesn't seem to be happening in that, in this mode. So that is something that we will look to fix later. Um, and it should even be compatible with old replays because that doesn't really change anything. It's just like, you know, whether or not you draw the, th the thing, right? Now we do have more striders coming out, sort of, uh, streaming out, you could even say. And, uh, this base is very late from Kian, so he will be at an economic disadvantage. He hasn't really done much scouting to confirm the spots. And I know this is a very new map, right? So people are probably adapting to it in that sense. Um, we did obviously see earlier that the Shambler was up against the map's creator, uh, Ben Tabersky, and he was tickling a defensive structure here from this area with, like, one of the shortest range units, right? It's it's just, I mean, it's five range, I guess, so it's not terrible, but it's like, really? That's, that's what you're going to do? And so this uh, scouting pylon is, you know, it's not a terrible idea, I guess. But uh, it is a little bit weird. So he's got, uh, what, three Cabalists here. He's going to try to focus down some of the Draconins. But this is not really the main combat role of the Cabalist, right? You, you don't usually go for them against high durability units like a, a Draconin or a Hierophant. You know, relatively high durability, I'm thinking. Obviously, against Mavericks, they can literally one-shot them. But uh, when you're thinking about what you want to do... To, uh, and, and this is good from the Shambler, obviously, just like scouting around with occasional units and stuff. There's nothing uh, guarding it over there. So the Cabalists will uh, do their thing, do what they can. Uh, still no acknowledgement. Okay, now he's figured it out. Okay, now I, I do indeed have vision on uh, on this base. And yeah, not actually a whole lot of money for either player. Grand Library and an Embassy coming down. So it looks like maybe there could be some drop shenanigans. There could also just be some opportunities for a Witness to pop out. And yes, now we will see the Cabalists... Uh, just two rotations will be enough to kill a single dragon, but that assumes you can actually surround them. And that's why, like, you know, again, we're thinking, okay, what do we want out of the... What, what do we want out of the Cabalists? You're going to use them against, you know, Zerg, you know, who are going Quasrock openers. You're going to use them against maybe Bio, like I was mentioning. Or even, you know, to some degree, you could imagine the heavy burst that they deal with their first attack could really be hazardous for Blackjacks or hazardous for something like that. And... At this point, I think it's kind of a misbuy to be getting them. You you could be going for Vagrants for more sustained damage, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that either because of their generally low, um, you know, punch, right? I, I can't remember their armor pen. They might be su sufficient to deal with uh, the three armor of the Dracodin, or at the very least, the two armor of the Hierophant. But yeah, at this point, that base is going to be taken out, and it's going to send Kian back onto a one-base situation. It's not terrible because, again... Uh, Kian does have only one base, and the Shambler has only two bases, but this does hurt, and I think a large portion of that is because he didn't take the base that was more easily reinforced. Uh, that being said, I think you could probably still abuse some spots here, especially if you had vision of this, say with a, a air unit or maybe even a, just a unit stuck into this corner, and then you just moved some uh, Dracodins down here and started taking pot shots at the workers. That's definitely like something that we've all been aware of recently is that um, uh, we have... Some, some problems with maps if they can do stuff like that. And so we try to shape those up a little bit uh, as, as time goes on. So that can be something later. Here we go. We got a, a melee band trying to reinforce. And there's just a little bit of kiting. Some more units coming down from the back to slow down the Zealots. And it will soon just be Cabalists. But uh, yeah, the good surrounds here. Pretty solid. Fairly reasonable. 
And, uh, yeah, he's just going to move around. He might lose a couple of Cabalists here. Not actually sure. But they move pretty quickly, so I think at this point, Shambler just needs to get out of here. Obviously, uh, Kian's attention is being, you know, drowned out by all of the movement of the Cabalists. He is going to get a single Dracodin. And, uh, you know, maybe he'll scout out that uh, expansion attempt in the top right. But he's got almost a thousand minerals now. And it's just like, what can you do in the meantime? He is move commanding them over here. And there is a witness over the embassy. And so that does feel like, okay, you know, you got to be careful here. He's actually he's boxed one of the Kabbalists in, which is really funny. And so he will go for some worker kills. Uh, but obviously at this point, the witness is uh, out and active. And so he will get a single worker kill. And that is all she wrote for that raid. So definitely not cost efficient. A little bit awkward on the pathing there. And, uh, you know, it, it confirmed some scouting, you know, it confirmed the number of striders. At this point, Kian should definitely feel like, okay, I mean, he probably didn't scout the second grand library, but he definitely should feel like, okay, Shambler probably is on two bases. So I need to think about what's either going to end the game very quickly because I'm at an economic disadvantage. The longer the game goes on, the worse off I am. Or he needs to be thinking about how can I stabilize, take like multiple bases at the same time. <laughs> and obviously that was something he could have done with the money that he had at the, a little bit ago. Uh, and, you know, what can I do to get the advantage back in my favor? I mean, this base being what the Shambler takes is, like, super weird. Because as you saw when Kian tried to take it, it's, like, very isolated. Even these four Wardens would be nothing compared to the might of Kian's army. And he's just going to mass up over here. He's not going to be going for shutting down this potential third base. He is just going to be planning a frontal attack. But if the same thing happens and we try to do another base trade, right, you definitely favor Shambler from this position because at this point, he's just got so many more units. And he can even take like half of his force to answer Kian's force plus the units that are kind of come out of the reinforcements from the uh, factories, right, the defender's advantage, and then take the rest of his force and just dump it into... Um, you know, Kian's base and kill him, and then Kian will have accomplished nothing. At this point, it might be a little bit more on the dangerous side because uh, the army is a little bit further out. This is probably just going to make Sh uh, Shamler pull the trigger again and think, wow, I, I a lot of base trades seem to be happening these days. Um, and it's a little bit of an awkward spread. At the same time, we do have this attack commencing and some more reinforcements from Kian, but I, it's, it's awkward, right? He's only sent, like, the first half of his army. That could be one way that Shambler doesn't come out ahead on this trade. Uh, that being said, I do think that uh, this Nexus will end up going down. And yeah, the rest of the units are here. There's pretty much no hope. Remember, Kian is only on a single base at this point. He is going to try to, uh, looks like he's gonna try to expand uh, or something, you know, extend the game because of his economic might. He sells a lot of units here. I still think that the Shambler could win a fight with that uh, if he consolidated his forces. Uh, but I suppose that isn't going to happen. There is gonna be a single Atreus that pops out of there that he might be able to bring back with the rest of his army. And no, he's just actually going to let it fire. And if uh, Kian's not careful, he, he will get chiseled away a little bit. So he looks like he'll lose a single Draconin. Not uh, terrible. He'll even get a Simulacrum for his troubles. And, you know, that doesn't sound like a lot, but that does matter. And, uh, of course, Kian could... Ah, uh... uh, okay. He wanted to build a Nexus over here. But I don't think... He's got to build a, a structure soon, because otherwise he will end up getting owned. Right? Like, this is really awkward for him. Um, because he's, the defeat condition is factories, so, like, the aquifer doesn't matter here. At least the defeat condition should be factories. I don't know what, uh, Ben Tversky did for him. It might be buildings instead. I guess we all, we might have an opportunity to find out, but it looks like maybe they die at roughly the same time. No, it was factories, and that will be the end of the game. Kian unable to pull the trigger and complete the, uh, the comeback there. That, that was really strange how close it actually was to being, to ending in favor of Kian. Like, is a lot closer than I thought it would be, right? Because, you, again, you look at the army strength, like, again, half of what the Shambler had for his main army could have reposted, you know, Kian's army if they fought within the base defenses and within the rally points of those factories. So you really would have expected Kian to just be reposted, but, you know, despite the fact that Shambler had a witness, he didn't bother having any map presence, even though he had a base in the top right that he was setting up. So... He definitely could have gotten caught off guard there. And you can see he was floating tons of money because he couldn't really spend it because his base died. So that's uh, one of them awkward situations where it's like, oh, man, what do you do? So, yeah, honestly, um, that is one way to equalize. Apparently, guys, if you are down by a base or two, and you're, you've, but you've got, like, all in on army 
and you're not ex able to expand because you get contained or whatever, and then you find a way to get out of the map, and I guess it's not much of a contain, you just had your expansions denied, then apparently this is a solution for you guys. You can just all in and try to do a base trade <laughs> and see what happens. Just uh, make sure you drop your production facilities a little bit earlier uh, in the other area, right? That's one of the main weaknesses of only having one base, I guess, is that if the, if the base trade is what happens, then you just get owned, so... Uh, that was the game. That was the cast. Here's the score screen. You get to see the computers that were in the OBS section. And I suppose, uh, I don't know. Uh, the jury's still out on, you know, what, post your thoughts on, on the map and, and what might be a good change for Ben to make uh, to that map if you have any thoughts at all. And obviously if you played, like if you were Ben, if you were uh, the Shambler, if you were Kian, then, uh, ch you know, interested in your thoughts as well. And that is going to conclude this cast over. So see you guys tomorrow for another one.